Welcome to Predictable Revenue Radio, hosted by Patrick Morrissey, Chief Marketing Officer at Altify, the sales transformation company. At Predictable Revenue Radio, we believe the only way to unlock sustained growth is to deliver predictable revenue by delivering insights, thought leadership, and best practices on how to improve sales velocity. So sit back, all that and more is coming your way as we turn it over to our host, Patrick. Hey, Patrick. Paul, how are you? Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. You've got quite a gaggle of experts this morning here. I don't know if that's a, if that's the official term for a big body of uh, smart people, but uh, we'll call it a gaggle. Well, it's a gaggle of revenue producers, which is what the conversation's really about. Kicking off the new year, we decided to bring a lot of horsepower to the table early to really set the agenda around how do you drive revenue and how do you drive growth in 2019. For many people, that is an intersection with Salesforce, whether you're a CRO using Salesforce or probably more likely you're somebody in the sales service technology world trying to figure out how do you partner with Salesforce or maybe how do you emulate the success of Salesforce. So we want to convene a conversation today about what does good partnering look like in context of Salesforce, because there's a massive ecosystem trying to crack the code here. And we've got three people who are experts on the topic to give three different perspectives about what good looks like. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's bring them in here. And before that, do you have any idea on how many people use Salesforce these days? That was a question uh, that came up. That is a great question. I bet Alex, our first guest, is going to help us. But by the public numbers, there's more than 150,000 companies in more than 100 countries around the world. And considering that Salesforce seems to be growing at a clip of about 25% quarter over quarter and has done that for the last 10 years, there's a lot of people using Salesforce is the bottom line. Okay. Well, who have we got to educate us on how to use this platform? We've got three different guests, Paul. Uh, I'd like to introduce the audience to Alex Douglas, and she is the Director of Alliances for Salesforce.com. Welcome, Alex. We've also got Kevin Murray. He is the Director of Marketing and Alliances for Traction on Demand, a leading Salesforce partner and systems integrator and innovator. And then finally, we've got Helen Ju, who's the Vice President of Alliances for Altify. I'd like to have all of you just introduce yourselves briefly, and then we can jump into a conversation. And Alex, let's start with you. Uh, introduce us to yourself and to Salesforce. Sure. Thanks, Pat. Hi, everybody. Um, as Pat said, my name is Alex Douglas, and I am a ISC Partner Account Director here at Salesforce, which means that I work with software companies. Over my tenure here at Salesforce for the past six years, worked with companies of, of all different sizes. Currently, I'm working with larger partners like Altify, more strategic partners for Salesforce. And further background than that, I've been in tech for 20 years, and I've been working with ISVs for half of that. Excellent. I'll turn it well, over to Helen. That's great. Helen, please introduce yourself. Good morning, everybody. So yeah, my name is Helen Ju, and I run alliances at Altify. And I've been with Altify about a year. And prior to that, I spent five years at another partner, um, Salesforce partner called DocuSign, where I actually helped build the Salesforce partnership. Prior to that, I spent 15 plus years in uh, payments, actually, credit cards. So very excited to be here and be part of the panel here. Thanks for joining us, Helen. And Kevin, up to Vancouver and to you. Please uh, give us a little bit of background on yourself and Traction on Demand. Thanks, Pat. Nice to meet everybody. My name is Kevin Murray. I'm the Director of Marketing and Alliances for Traction on Demand. Uh, Traction on Demand is a Vancouver-based Salesforce implementation partner. We've been around since 2006. We've been dedicated to the Salesforce platform and the ecosystem since that time. I've been around since 2013 when we were about 40 people and have helped grow kind of the Alliance network, worked very closely with Helen, both at DocShine and at Altify, and, and then uh, with a lot of people like Alex uh, over at the Salesforce team as well. We are now uh, just over 500 people and growing at a significant pace, again, all based on the Salesforce platform. You guys are, are a great success story and have a long track record of innovation, Kevin. So I'm very interested in your perspective as well. And before, and maybe it's, it's best to actually start with you, before we dive into the specifics of the machine that is Salesforce, give me your definition of partnership and alliances. What Set the table in terms of what's the baseline definition of alliances, partnerships, and, and channels in a technology company or and for you guys as a services organization? It's a good one, and it's, it's one that should actually be, I, I don't know why more people don't think of it like this or, or don't have this opinion in there, but it's, it is truly a mutually beneficial relationship between software-related organizations. 
that ultimately strengthens and kind of ensures the success of our customers. That is the bottom line focus is customer success. So building the right partnerships. Excellent. Helen, how would you color this conversation? Interesting question, actually, because I think a lot of companies approach partnerships differently. So I'll give you an example. I have been with partners and um, companies that often look at other partners as just a lead gen machine. And, you know, they're looking at how do we get a lead from another partner without looking at, to Kevin's point, sort of holistically, well, what's in it for them and how is this mutually beneficial? And, and how does it look over time? Because I think a lot of sales organizations are measuring sort of these interactions and the investments they make in the partner ecosystem, uh, aligning it to the way that they look at marketing spend. And they say, hey, if I spend a dollar, I should be getting a dollar back today or this quarter. And that's not often the way the partnerships work. You've got to be able to take a step back and say what you're looking for from the partner is not the same as what you would look for in a traditional marketing or a, or a sales scenario. Well, exactly. And, and you both hit on a couple things I want to come back to, but I want to, I want to swing over to Alex because Kevin touched on the notion of customer success. And Alex, that's one of the, the hallmarks of the core tenets of, of Salesforce and how they behave and how Salesforce has become what it is today. So give me your perspective in terms of partnerships and what's in it for the partner and maybe more importantly, to Kevin's point, what's in it for the customer? So I would certainly echo Kevin's point because this is, this is very Salesforce specific. When I think of the large tech companies in the market today, you know, we really approach partnership from you know, at the very highest level, you know, how is this going to be a mutually beneficial relationship for both of us with this laser focus on our mutual customers? So mutually beneficial for both of us, certainly from a revenue perspective, from an innovation perspective. But then, of course, how are we going to better serve our mutual customers? And so our partners do this really well. We do this really well in concert with our partners. And so I think if I pull way back and think about Mark Benioff and why he decided 18 odd years ago that we needed to have this thing called an ISV program where we're going to be working with partners who are going to help us not only innovate on our own platform, but to take us to customer segments and users that we could never capture otherwise, right? So that's a, that's a huge benefit benefit to Salesforce. But then, of course, our belief is that those customers are then able to adopt technology that, of course, is going to be better for their customers and their customers' customers. But again, I think central to all of this is that we want to make our customers more successful. We want to give them a one-stop shop. They can come and they can buy Salesforce products, but then they can leverage the app exchange to complete their, their stable of needs, if you will. Yeah, and that requires, to meet those needs requires oftentimes a combination of solutions, which might be services, might be technology, might be custom development work, and a lot of applications and integrations that are available on App Exchange. When you think about the value proposition, and Kevin, I'm going to come back to you on this and, and going back to Helen's point in terms of what's the value proposition and how does a customer win here? How do you guys see the, the ecosystem at traction? Because you're on the services side of this discussion versus the software side that Helen is on and, and where Alex spends most of her time. What's the so what in terms of what makes traction different and what's the value proposition, the value that you're trying to bring to customers that helps you stand out from the rest of the crowd? It's a, an interesting position and one that really focuses around remaining a trusted advisor to the customer. So they look to us just as much as they look to the vendors themselves, but kind of to us to provide an agnostic view of what's out there in the... For us, we've built what we've referred to as our, our perfect tech stack, which includes kind of a number of supporting technologies that enhances and kind of grows the breadth of the Salesforce platform. When we were smaller, we used to kind of stick to one vendor per space. Uh, but as we've grown, as our customer base has grown, we truly need to be informed about every single type of uh, organization and offering out there on the market. So they look to us to say, hey, guys, what's the right solution for X or, or you know, I'm an enhancing service cloud. What, what am I going to need to really connect my call centers in, in the appropriate way? So you look at telephony solutions and things like that. It's all about building those strong relationships between ISVs that we can trust, that have a good partner program, and that see the end customer and the customer success as the as the goal and not necessarily uh, a partner like us as a revenue stream directly. 
Yeah, and that goes back to the idea of, of mutual value, which means you've got to not only service the, the customer value, but you've got to connect the dots with the army that is the Salesforce Direct team. And when you think about, Helen, your day in life now or going back to having built that program at, at DocuSign and that intersection with Salesforce, and, and certainly that film has ended well with DocuSign having recently gone public. When you think back to the early days, what was key in terms of the focus that you deployed and, and how do you partner effectively with Salesforce at the at the rep level or at the management level to present that joint value proposition to customers? Because it sounds easy, but in real life, it's not always that simple. No, it's not. So maybe I'll answer the question in, in two parts. One is uh, in terms of how to approach Salesforce, and this is just from lessons learned over the years for me, and I'm sure Alex can could add to that. I think the one mistake some of the, the new partners, ISC partners especially, coming into the ecosystem make is um, trying to do too much too fast. Right. So, you know, often we're small companies, limited budget. You cannot try to educate and build awareness to a 30, 40,000 army overnight. So knowing where to focus and knowing where you're, where you can add the most value, whether it's a sales segment, we're talking about, you know, SMB, mid market, enterprise, or a vertical, going deep is key. So creating your target, building your value. And then being able to go deep and find those champions and find those uh, ambassadors at Salesforce, I think that's critical. Uh, another point I would make is how you might want to leverage your marketing dollars. You know, many partners spend a lot of money on both conferences and maybe uh, marketing with Salesforce or marketing independently, but in the ecosystem. And unless you can align all of those things, you'll just get lost in the noise. There's just so much in the ecosystem and targeted at Salesforce. The the last point I would probably make is find that ecosystem of partners that are serving the same workflow, same customers, and partner with that. You know, when you can bring a full suite and an end-to-end story, and Kevin knows this and spent a lot of time talking about, you know, when I was at DocuSign, things like flow to cash, when you can bring all of that to life together, I think that makes it a lot easier, more easier to adopt as well as easier to get you know, recognize the different players. So that would be sort of one part of the discussion. The, the other piece that I would probably highlight for anyone who's listening is you got to do your work internally. If you don't have a management team and an organization who understands how to partner and what the value of a partnership is over a long period of time, I think you will spend a lot of time as somebody who manages the partnership internally justifying what you're doing versus sort of focusing on the things that really build that relationship. Yeah, it's a good point. And I want to switch over to Alex for a, a minute before we go into a, a quick break here. Alex, give me the uh, the most common fallacy that people have about partnering with Salesforce or what are the most common questions you've got to answer about the expectations that people have as they enter the partner ecosystem? I would say right off the top, the number one fallacy is if we build it, they will come. In other words, if I put my app on the app exchange, you know, just by nature of it being there, you know, we're going to sell, it's going to sell itself. And especially today where our ecosystem is so crowded, it's so busy. To Helen's point, we have thousands of AEs and there's a lot of noise around them as well. And so I think it's that expectation that if we build it, they will come compounded by, I expect Salesforce to send me hundreds of leads starting tomorrow. I think where I set and reset expectations almost on a daily basis is, look, you're building a company. This is your profit center. It's your product to sell. We are here to scaffold what you're doing and to provide guidance and best practices around that. But you as a company are going to sell and market your own product. And then over time, it is gradual and it is relatively organic. Over time, your brand, if you invest properly, if you're focused, to Helen's point, your brand will grow and those leads will come, but that shouldn't be your expectation off the bat, for sure. Got it. So let's take a break here and pay the bills and we'll pick up this conversation in a second. You're only successful as your customers, and that demands the need for an exceptional sales execution, revenue retention, and customer success. The challenge for most sales leaders and their teams, however, is that their sales process just doesn't match how their customers buy. Sustained growth isn't possible because the revenue team isn't aligned with customers and prospects. 
With Altify's sales transformation solutions, companies can deliver predictable revenue growth. Yes, we said predictable revenue growth. They can also acquire and retain customers, and they can collaborate across the revenue team to qualify and win new business while delivering value that unlocks cross-sell and upsell opportunities. Built natively on the Salesforce platform, Altify helps salespeople, managers, and executives achieve sustained revenue growth. They help accelerate sales performance for Autodesk, Comcast, GE, Honeywell, Salesforce, Tableau, and United Healthcare. They can do the same for you. Visit Altify.com, just like it sounds, A-L-T-I-F-Y, Altify.com. All right, let's pick it back up with Patrick and his gaggle of good guests. Um, I think by gaggle, you mean hardcore revenue producers in the channel. (laughs) I think so. So we're talking today about the secrets of partnering with Salesforce, and and we're picking up a conversation with Alex Douglas from Salesforce. She's a director of ISV Alliances. We've got Kevin Murray, who's also a director at Traction On Demand, one of the leading, and I think the leading, independent Salesforce solutions provider and independent services uh, and innovation company, as well as we've got Helen Ju, the VP of Alliances at Deltify. And when we took a break a second ago, Alex was disabusing everybody of the fallacy of if you build it, they will come, meaning that once you get up on App Exchange or you, you know, partner and whether you're on the services side or the app side, that suddenly revenue is just going to knock down the doors when in fact, you got to have a really strong ground game and you've got to build relationships with AEs. And I would argue that's been one of the keys to the traction on demand success story, Kevin. I mean, this company has grown more than 10x in the time that you've been here. Give me your perspective on some of the, the keys to cracking the code and what's made Traction successful you know, on the street, in the field, and now globally in the Salesforce ecosystem. Yeah, thanks, Pat. So Helen and Alex spoke to the point of coming with productized solutions or, or um, you know, the notion that if you build it, they will come. I'd say from a services perspective as well, as Salesforce and the rest of the industry continues to verticalize, whether you're a services firm or not, you need to have solutions that look like products or something that can go out there, sell the value prop of a fully baked solution that has Salesforce built in with with a number of outside partners as, as well to kind of show the breadth. And that's one of the main things that I think that's where partners sometimes fail is they, they come to Salesforce and they say, we're, we're ready, you know, let's work together and, and we'll, we'll take on some of your leads. Uh, when really they should be coming from it the other way around and say, here's a, here's a solution that will help you sell Service Cloud. Here's a solution that looks at Einstein Analytics. Here's a solution that looks at Einstein Analytics with Altify or with uh, external partners that are going to kind of help everybody. And, and if you can get in front of the Salesforce AEs, if you can get in front of the customer with that, you are in a much better place to own a vertical or own an industry and be a reliant partner for them uh, long term. Yeah, that's an interesting point you're raising, Kevin, about being able to have an AE to AE conversation about here's what we do that's going to help you sell the franchise products, Sales Cloud, Service Cloud, Einstein, etc. Helen, you talked about the notion of focus earlier and about needing to build ambassadors and build the relationships. How do you do that in actual practice and what have you seen be successful? You've got to approach the partner selling, partner education, not different, any differently than the way you would look at a prospect. Um, you know, we talk about finding new prospects as, you know, you may have to do 10, 20, 30 touches before they turn into a potential lead. And partners are no different. So when we look at partnering with individual people, whether it's a Salesforce or other partners, there's a specific set of people we target. So based on, you know, the vertical or the segment that you want to go after. And then we continue to market to them. We market to them through email. We market to them through chatter. We try to surround them so that every time they turn around, we want them to be able to hear Altify in our stories, in our success stories. And then you got to build that personal relationship. Anyone who's in sales knows that it's the relationships over time. You know, people are going to buy from you because they trust you. And partnerships are no different. The fact that I've worked with people like Kevin over the years in multiple companies, it's because we built that relationship. And regardless of what company I go to, you know, I'll probably just call Kevin again. I mean, that's just an example of it. So, yeah, those are some of those things that I would say you need to really think about when you're looking at building that field relationship. If I can just build on that quickly, Pat, sorry. brings up such an important point that so much of it is based on the tech. And from our standpoint, we need to recommend the right solutions to our customers. But it's also the, the, the soft skills or the other aspects of that partnership that make it so uh, important. So I, I know that if I'm recommending Altify, I have a direct line to Helen and to you, your, your team to basically say, like, you know, work together with us on this. 
because if I don't have that relationship and, and we're not, we don't necessarily trust the organization, whether their tech is great or not, it's a really hard sell to us and to our team to actually implement, but then also to the customer to provide that backing and assurance that, yeah, this is an organization that we know you can be successful with. You're making a great point, uh, actually, Helen and Kevin, that it really, I think, and relationships are always anchored in trust, which is kind of core to how Salesforce has grown up. And Alex, you've seen this film, not just at Salesforce, but you were at VMware, you were at Oracle. So this is not your first rodeo. What's different about the Salesforce approach to, to partnerships, either on the SI or the ISV side, I guess is part of the question for you. And the other part of the question is, when you think about that difference, then what is it that a partner can do to really stand out and to to outperform in the ecosystem and, and really elevate their brand and elevate their revenue by partnering with Salesforce? Sure. I would say, you know, having worked with some really large and fantastic companies like Oracle, like VMware, like Microsoft, when I made the transition to Salesforce, what I noticed straight away was just hyper-focus on the customer. And I think a lot of companies talk that talk, but they don't walk that talk. And Salesforce does. And we do that on the direct side of our business, and we do that on the indirect side of our business, you know, in conjunction with our partners. And Pat, Helen, but Pat, especially you remember Ron Huddleston, who was really instrumental in building the ISV organization here at Salesforce. And I had the pleasure of working with him at Oracle where he built the ISV program there. And he really did have a motto that, you know, all partnerships are based on trust. And when you have that trust, anything is possible. And I think that's intrinsic to the Salesforce. It's one of our core values, but very much more broad than that. So on the whole, that right there is what stands out, separates Salesforce from others. But then what helps our partners to stand out And what helps our customers when they're thinking about the products they're going to buy from the app exchange is you are there to sort of enhance and extend this awesome Salesforce technology, but also to take us where we wouldn't go. I would say, you know, from a value perspective, you know, that's what that's what I think about the most. That's excellent. And I got two quick questions for all of you as we come up on our time, because I know all of you've got partnerships to run and revenue to generate. Question number one for 2019, what's your resolution to kick up the, the partner mojo, Kevin? And what would you suggest to people to think about as priority number one in 2019? Yeah, it's it's an interesting space right now. But, uh, and as we lead into 2019 with an expanding Salesforce platform, partners are rising and partners are falling and, and there's so much movement in the space. What we're going to be doing in 2019 is redefining our perfect tech stack to understand exactly uh, who is the right fit for our customers now. I mean, it's evolved so much over the last few years that we really need to uh, form some relationships that we know or continue to form relationships that we know are going to be beneficial for our customers. What's the hottest stuff out there? What's most used and and in what scenarios? And so really for us, it's a re-evolution, re-look at our, our perfect tech stack that we recommend to all of our customers. Excellent. Helen, what's on your resolution hit list? For Altify, I would say we've made a lot of progress in North America this year um, in terms of both not only the Salesforce partnership, but the other ISVs and um, the SIs of the ecosystem at large. I would say for us, our focus next year is going to be much more on our EMEA business and trying to see what best practice we have developed in North America that would apply and then learning about what is unique in the EMEA ecosystem, both partners, uh, regions, and I'm looking forward to the challenge and looking forward to working with you know everybody uh, to help us achieve that. And how about you, Alex? What's on the, the priority number one list for your resolution for 2019? I think the partners that I work with, it's coming back to innovating our platform, continuing to work with our partners to help them do that, adopt more of our technology where possible. And then from a Salesforce perspective, it's all about industry. That's going to be the, the mantra for next year. Excellent. We've got industries, we've got European focus or global focus, really, and the perfect tech stack. So I'm glad to hear, Kevin, that you and the Traction team have actually solved the perfect tech stack. And I wish all of you a fantastic year and uh, great partnering. So with that, I want to thank our guest, Alex Douglas from Salesforce, Kevin Murray from Traction On Demand, and Helen Chu from Altify. I wish all of you a fantastic year, happy partnering, and a great 2019. Back to you, Paul. You've been listening to Predictable Revenue Radio with your host, Patrick Morrissey, Chief Marketing Officer at Altify, the sales transformation company. One of the many shows here on the ever-growing Funnel Radio channel for at-work listeners. 
like you. 